dear friends, travelers and followers of our channel. This is Vera from Firebird Tours. We are still in St. Petersburg, but today we would like to take you for a tour around Peter and Paul's fortress. Maybe it must have been the first video on our channel as uh, Peter and Paul's fortress was the first building established by Peter the Great in the new capital on the 1703. Uh, uh, it happened on the 27th of May and is considered to be the birthday of our beautiful city. Uh, this is the entrance, this is the main uh, gate uh, to enter the Peter and Paul's fortress. So let's go along this bridge and uh, take a look what's located inside. So let's go step by step through the history uh, and at the same time we will show you around. So during the Northern War, the Sweden Peter the Great wanted to build a citadel, a fortress at the Neva River Delta in order to protect the uh, just regained lands on the coast uh, of the Gulf of Finland and also to control the trade in the Baltic region. Plus, also to uh, protect the projected capital. You see, uh, Peter the Great studied in Europe and just dreamed about building a very European like city. And the location of future St. Petersburg applied to his plans well, just perfectly. Um, so, first, here was but, but first here was a fortress, which by surprise never participated in any sea battles. Uh, there was another fortress called Kronstadt, uh, it's very close to St. Petersburg in the Gulf of Finland, we will show it to you on the map, um, uh, which uh, served as the guardian on the way to St. Petersburg. Uh, but I didn't tell you why the island where uh, the Peter and Paul fortress located called the Hare Island. Uh, the legend says <laughs> the legend says that um, when Peter the, per the first arrived to the spot there was nothing here and there were a lot of hares so one of them jumped on the boot of the emperor and this was it pretty much uh, that's the story here the story ends so it was pretty simple <laughs> um, yeah thank god it was a hare so a very weird <laughs> uh, monument of Peter the Great one of the uh, last ones it was made by the sculptor uh, the last name Shemyakin uh, <laughs> as you can see the head of Peter it was taken from the uh, death mask uh, of the emperor, but the size of the body was um, well, is way bigger. I don't like this monument at all. Um, yeah, this is it. <laughs> this is a very weird place, to be honest. I don't know what I feel about the Peter and Paul's fortress because so many things happened here. Uh, we will talk about it. Uh, during the video, it's a uh, kind of strange atmosphere over here. Somehow I feel it. <laughs> I would highly recommend you to go up to the Pana uh, Niva Panorama, uh, from where you can see a very beautiful view of St. Petersburg, and I will tell you more once we are there. Uh, this is where you can buy a ticket uh, to Niva Panorama. The thing is that entrance to the territory of the Peter and Paul's fortress is absolutely free. But if you would like to go up uh, to the Niva Panorama or to enter the Peter and Paul's Cathedral, this will be for an extra price. So the ticket, the price for the ticket to Niva Panorama costs 300 rubles, which is well around five dollars by today's rate. Uh, so. <laughs> Let's go in. One ticket, please. Uh, so, what's great about this uh, Pan Niva panorama is that you can enjoy. Uh, 
a very well powerful to my opinion view because you can see from here well this is the palace uh, embankment then winter uh, palace where the hermitage museum is located and i'm sure you know that then st isaac's cathedral with admiralty building and uh, old st petersburg uh, stock exchange with rostral columns on the uh, vasilevsky island on the other side well that's where the history where you can feel the history it's in the air <laughs> but also another great opportunity that you can experience here is the noon cannon shot uh, it's a very old tradition we will be able to uh, check it out because we got here in time so this is just the preparation moment so uh, but in the old times during the Peter the Great times uh, there were two shots one in the morning to start the working day and one in the evening to notify that the working day is over uh, right now we have only one shot um, uh, but I wanted to tell you actually kind of funny fact about the this uh, cannon that we have on Peter, Peter and Paul's fortress is that uh, it used to be turned to the main part of the city that's over there uh, and considered to be the uh, which is considered to be a winter palace uh, but with the modern times it started to cause a lot of inconvenience these uh, shots because there are motion sensors at the windows of the hermitage and uh, the shot is blank of course but the vibration is so strong that alarms uh, were triggered every single day at noon in the entire museum <laughs> so uh, the staff of hermitage approached to the, to the administration on peter and, of peter and paul's fortress to ask to move the direction of the cannons well somewhere else and they did that now it's facing the vasilevsky island uh, over there so yeah i think that's a fun effect but um, yes let's wait and uh, see and see uh, how it's working follow me Um, this gaze that you can see over here, this is not the main entrance. The main entrance is the one that we uh, shoot in the beginning of this video. These gates are called Neva gates or death gates. Uh, why is that? The thing is that since this fortress was a prison for quite a long time, uh, prisoners from here, usually at night, were taken to the penal servitude or after execution the bodies again at night we're taken to the cemetery uh, the prison of uh, Trubitskoy Bastion um, works as a museum right now so you can also visit it at the extra price uh, well if you're interested in this topic I'm not planning to talk today about the construction of St. Petersburg though it's very interesting and extremely uh, it was extremely tough building of the city. Today let's concentrate on Peter and Paul's fortress. So as I mentioned before, it never served its um, intended uh, defensive function and very soon it was turned into a prison for high-ranking uh, and political uh, convicts. Uh, and also it was an execution ground. So let's get inside uh, and take a look at it. prison there was created a very strict system of solitary confinement the purpose of which was to isolate the prisoner from the well, completely from the entire world and from the other prisoners uh, so yes we're here to be honest the feeling is a little weird 
because the play because of the place of course uh, well let's take a look around a little bit Uh, Peter and Paul's fortress had several functions and as we already discussed it was uh, a fortress at first then it was a prison but most people know this place is the location of the imperial tombs um, the tradition to bury the members of the ruling dynasty uh, in the churches was based on the idea of divine origin of their power and before Peter the Great uh, who moved the capital from Moscow to the new city of St. Petersburg uh, the uh, temple tomb was uh, at the Archangel Cathedral uh, in the Moscow Kremlin, which you will be able to visit if you are in Moscow. After the death of Peter the Great, um, all of the emperors and empress were buried here at the St. Peter, uh, Peter and Paul's uh, Cathedral. Uh, the price to get inside is 450 rubles. Um, of course, I highly recommend you to get inside. That's what we are planning to do. I already got the tickets, so um, let's go in. This is an Orthodox church. It doesn't look like one because we are used to see the uh, Russian Orthodox churches, uh, you know, with the domes, with the, like onions, uh, onion. So there is a different Russian style of the Orthodox churches. But Peter the Great uh, uh, wanted to build this church in very like European style, so it looks completely different. But this is uh, this is an Orthodox church. So we are here, um, I'm not planning to talk a lot uh, inside uh, of this cathedral. Uh, the only thing that I would like to tell you is that this is still an active church, which is great. Uh, so St. Peter and Paul's Cathedral, just like the church in the spill blood, they are museums at the moment, but at the big holidays, uh, religion holidays, and on the weekends, they work as active churches. So people come here to pray. Um, yeah, so this is it. Let's uh, take a look around. Here on the right side from the altar we can see the tombs of, well, those who you should know for sure um, from the Russian history. Uh, this is Elizabeth I, daughter of Peter the Great. In the middle, uh, Catherine I, his wife. And the last tomb is uh, Peter the Great. To resume what we talked about 
in this video uh, Peter and Paul's fortress is surely the landmark of St. Petersburg that cannot be missed I strongly suggest you to come here with the guide with the local professional because there is a lot that, that you can learn about St. Petersburg history and uh, Russian Empire history by just visiting this place um, so thank you very much for watching this was Vera from St. Petersburg uh, and Firebird Tours and with Anastasia behind the camera uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and made it till the end uh, we'll see you next time and next week <laughs>